Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Ridgewood High School Alumni Hall of Fame Bruncheon. My name is Jeff Angelari. I'm an alumnus of the class of 2002. Today, we honor the accomplishments of three former students, Dwayne Lutzow, Linda Rago Pizzullo, and Joy Carol Wykowski. And I hope you appreciate just how special these three people are. Because when it comes to bestowing this honor, there were a lot of people to choose from. More than 10,200 students have donned Kelly Green caps and gowns and walked the march of pomp and circumstance. A fair warning today, be prepared to be proud. Thanks to the Ridgewood Foundation, we're able to honor them with the hope that their accomplishments will serve as examples for people who came before, during, and after to strive for positive change. But before we hear those stories, and they are really good ones, we're marking a certain milestone today, and it's important to note that this is Ridgewood's 50th year, and for those of you who are 50 years or older, and that's many of you, 50 years, <laughs> 50 years may not seem that long of a time, but as you can also attest, a lot can change in so short a time. Think back, if you will, to a time before the internet before many of us had color televisions, before suburban sprawl transformed the landscape. If we were standing in this very same spot, October 3rd, 1959, we likely would be getting our feet wet or standing knee deep in mud. Imagine hundreds of steel support beams sprouting to the sky as contractors transformed a swamp on Montrose Avenue into a brand new high school. On September 15th, 1960, Ridgewood opened its doors to 425 students, 250 freshmen, 175 sophomores. When it came to educational delivery, well, that was something of an innovation. Utilizing Dr. Lloyd Trump's methods, students at Ridgewood got to learn in a variety of settings, large group, seminar, labs, and independent study. When it came to curriculum, some classes didn't even have textbooks. Teachers had the potential and the freedom to develop their own curriculum. Amazing to think they looked just as young as the students they were teaching, and age-wise, some of them were not far off. Students of the 60s and 70s learned on their own time, chose courses and assignments that fit aspiration. It was an educational style that fit a generation. They attempted Everest every day and in every way, and when it came to out-of-class activities, these young people embodied the phrase extracurricular. Whether they participated or cheered, they went all out. From school plays that played to packed houses three nights in a row, to homecoming parade floats that took a month to construct. During some basketball games, believe it or not, especially when they played rivals, the fire marshal had to stand watch at the door, turn people away to make sure that too many students didn't enter the building and create a fire hazard. At that time, Ridge's population ballooned to more than 1,700 students. By the 80s and 90s, the educational freedom that the baby boomers enjoyed and employed didn't seem to work too well for their kids. And the extracurricular enthusiasm began to wane along with the school's population. The number of enrolled students plummeted to 500. But during that time, what we lost in vigor, we gained in progress. Ridgewood acknowledged the numerous immigrants who helped build the community and their children by developing groundbreaking English as a second language programs. And for the students requiring more one-on-one -on -one attention, those learning at a slower pace, special ed classes and trained teachers made learning accessible to all students. At the other end of the spectrum, advanced placement courses bloomed, allowing students to earn college credit years before they joined a prestigious university. School became a more structured, intimate time. A new library wing appeared, a new gymnasium, new auditorium, state-of-the-art with technology center, and revamped athletic fields, transforming a U-shaped building designed by factory contractors into a modern high school setting. Not every new addition was without controversy, however. The new football stadium lights caused a bit of a stir, and there was definitely some eye-rolling at the heated sidewalks. Change doesn't always come with a consensus. By the time I arrived, at the turn of the millennium, 
Ridgewood was undergoing yet another transformation. Technology, of course, is the most obvious. As freshmen, we were practicing our keyboarding skills and sending emails. By senior year, we were designing web pages. Scheduling also changed drastically. We learned by the block, four classes, 90 minutes a day. It actually gave us time to play an entire sport in gym class, made for in-depth discussions and analysis in English, and allowed more one-on-one -on -one time to work on our algebra equations with math instructors. With everything that changed during those years, one of the most profound had nothing to do with how we learned, but who we learned from. More than half the teachers I had had taught my mother 25 years earlier. Now they were maturing. Many of them had or were about to retire. In the four years I attended Ridgewood, 18 faculty members retired with 557 years of service to this school. They were the mainstay of the Ridgewood family. What we lost in their experience and pools of wisdom, we gained in a new group of young educators possessing the same seemingly boundless energy that their predecessors had a generation before. It's the same passion for education that built these halls that can inspire students to attempt those Everests. The same attitude and love for community that makes families want to stay in the island within the city. And it's a vote of confidence that saw a foundation rise out of a swamp in the autumn of 1959. Once again, welcome back to Ridgewood High School, whether it's one or 50 years later. When the day is done, I hope you are as proud to be a member of the Ridgewood family as I am, a place that helped foster the growth of the three people we honor today. Thank you very much.